So today I want to talk about cron jobs. So if you don't know, a cron job is basically a way to set up a periodic action on your Linux system. So things like updating a database every couple of days, downloading package updates once a week, sending yourself an email notification every couple of hours, or even things like letting people in your remote group chat know that you're actually working. Things that you want to do periodically. I know before someone points this out that system D timers are a thing. We are not talking about system D timers today. We are going to be talking about cron, also anacron briefly, but mainly cron. I will do a video on system D times at some point though. So let's not waste any more time and just jump right into it. Firstly, because I'm on Arch, I'm going to need to install an implementation of cron. Now, some distros do come with one, and we're going to be using Crony today. And the reason we're using Crony is because it also comes with Anacron. Now, I've just been using Crony for a few months. I didn't really know about the Anacron stuff until fairly recently, but we can look into that one as well. So sudo pacman-s crony. Now it's just in the standard repo, so you can just download it like that, and I've already got it installed, so I'm not gonna worry with it. Now once you do have it installed, you're going to have to remember to enable the service. So if we go sudo system ctl enable crony, make sure you spell this correctly, dot service. I did this wrong before, but uh, that's why we had to start the recording again. And if we go dash dash now as well, then we won't have to reboot the system. So I just run this and I've already got this enabled so it shouldn't really do too much. And as we can see, it doesn't really do anything on my system because I've already got it set up. If you haven't run this already, it'll say it's creating a sim link. And once it's done that, then crony is actually going to be running. So if we just run cron tab dash E, then we can see all of the cron jobs that are set up for our user. If we were to do that, but do it with sudo instead. Both these files will be empty when you first run this command. So just because I have stuff in here doesn't mean that you will. So I've got a few cron jobs in here. Now I'll go into these in just a moment. So there's a few other things I want to talk about before we get to that. Now there's a few files that we should probably care about if we're working with cron. Now most of the time people don't really talk about these, but there are some more files besides those two files you can edit right there. So let's go into the Etsy directory and just have a brief look. So there's these folders in here called cron.something. So all of these folders actually do something really important. So cron.d, what this one does is it has one file in here. Now, when you install crony, it comes with this by default. Basically what this one's going to do is just run all of your hourly jobs. If you want to do any system-wide cron jobs, you can put them in this directory here and put them in the same form. So the time the cron job's going to be running, the user that it's going to be running for, and then the command. So if I wanted to run this for my user, I would put in the time, I would put in Brody, and then I would put in the command. If you want to do it for root, then you can look at this example right here. So this is one place you can put stuff. The reason you generally don't put stuff here though, because since it's in the Etsy directory, the only person who's going to have access to it is the root user. So if you want to have user jobs in here, then you're going to have to edit them with sudo, which doesn't really make it act like a user job. Obviously, they'll still work as a user job, but you have to use sudo to edit them. But you can put any of your cron jobs in this folder here, and they will work. Now, there's a couple of other folders in here. So we've got the cron.daily, cron.hourly, cron.monthly, and cron.weekly. So these are pretty much as you would expect. So if you put a job in here, so any sort of script, it doesn't have to be in the form of a cron job, Basically, what's going to happen is that cron job is just going to run daily, hourly, monthly. So there's one other that isn't here, and that is minutely. I'm not sure why minutely isn't here by default, but there's also a minutely one. So if you put it in the minutely directory, then that cron job will run every single minute. Typically, I don't use these. As you can see, I've got them empty. I just use the cron tab dash E edit. But if you want to do stuff system wide, this is where you would do it. Now, there is one file in here, and that is zero anacron. So basically, this will say run your anacron jobs. Now, anacron is a little bit different. So I mentioned that briefly just before. Anacron is very, very similar to cron. So cron jobs will run every periodic amount of time. Now, anacron is exactly the same, except for one caveat. Anacron jobs will also try to run when your system is off. So obviously they can't run when your system's off. So when you reboot your system, basically it's going to look at all the jobs that have passed between the two previous reboots and then say, okay, is there anything in this period that I haven't run? And then it will try to run all of those jobs again. So for any jobs that absolutely have to run on a system that may be shut down, Anacron is the better way to do it. If it doesn't really matter if a job gets missed, like it's things such as giving you an email notification, then it's perfectly fine to put them within cron. 
So I lied, there's one other difference between Kron and Anacron, and that is that Anacron jobs will only run at a day level, so Kron jobs can go down to the minute. Now, if you want to actually define an Anacron job, it's a bit different than the way that you define a Kron job, but if we have a look at where that file is, and that'll be the Anacron tab file, so this file is made by default, and there is some stuff in here by default as well. So let's just have a brief look at this one. Now, the way that this works is similar-ish to the way that cron jobs work, but also a bit different. So you can define the period in days. So this means it'll run every one day. This means it'll run every seven days. This means it'll run monthly. I'm not sure what the limit for this is. I assume there's probably some maximum limit for how rarely you can have your jobs run. I assume it's probably like an integer limit or something like that. But if we want to say have this run, I don't know, let's have a new job in here and have it run daily. And then we can give it a delay. So let's give it a delay of 10. And then we have to give it a name. So let's just call it uh, a.job, whatever. And then give it the command. So echo hi. So basically what's going to happen is that once a day, a.job is going to echo hi. Not really a very useful script or a very useful Anacron job, but that's basically how that works. So you can use daily, weekly, monthly, or specify a number of days. So that's pretty much how that works. I'm not gonna do that now, but as you can see, it's pretty straightforward how that works. Now there's one other file you absolutely need, and that is the cron.deny file. So I don't believe crony will even run without this file. And basically what this file is, is a blacklist of users who are not allowed to touch cron jobs. There is an opposite of it called uh, cron.allow, which is a white list of users who are allowed to use cron jobs. The benefit of using cron.deny, especially on a system that is this simple, is that it can be a completely empty file and cron will completely work. But if it is a cron.allow file, basically you have to list out all of the users who are allowed to use cron jobs. So if you're the only user of a system like I am, I would really recommend just using a cron.deny file and then just leaving it empty. That is the default way it's set up. If you need a whitelist though, you can use cron.allow. Now, there is one other file in here that I don't actually have created, and that is the crontab file. So crontab will take precedence over the cron.d directory. So as we mentioned before, cron.d is a place where you can define cron jobs. The crontab file is also a place where you can define cron jobs. So this is a folder where you can define them. The crontab file is a file. There's not really any difference between using one or the other, but the crontab file will take precedence. So if you define all your cron jobs in a single file called crontab, only those cron jobs will be run. If you define them in the folder called cron.d, they'll be run from there. So what about that stuff we saw with crontab? Because as we saw, none of those jobs we actually had defined were defined in any of these files. So those jobs are defined in a little bit of a different location. So those will be in the var directory in the spool directory. So as we see in here, we have two files in the cron folder, and that is Brody and Root. So this is where your user jobs are kept if you use the cron tab dash e command. Now, I wouldn't recommend modifying these files directly. There's two reasons for it. So the first one is that you don't get syntax highlighting. And the second one is that I'm not sure if cron will actually accept the changes or actually automatically reload the changes if these files are modified directly. So I would recommend using the crontab-e command instead. Now you might have also noticed we have an anacron directory. This is basically where all the timestamps for anacron jobs are kept. There aren't actually any cron jobs in here. This will just be where all of your timestamps are. So I wouldn't recommend modifying these files directly either. Just know that if for whatever reason you do need to modify these files, then they are actually here. So that's enough explaining how all of this works. Let's actually go and define a cron job already. So if we write cron tab dash E, this will bring up that file that we just saw before that has all of my user cron jobs. So I've got two in here. This one right here runs on the first minute of every fourth hour. Basically, it's going to clear out any torrents I have available. So this next one I have in here will run every 30 minutes. I'm not actually sure why I even have this here actually. Basically, what it's gonna do is update my polybar with with my Pac-Man packages module every 30 minutes. I'm not sure why I'm doing it here and not in the script where I actually download the updates. I'm not sure why that's here. Anyway, let's actually go and look at how this works. So there's a couple of constants we can sometimes use. Now, I wouldn't recommend using these because they're not standard and they might not work in every single implementation of cron. But let's just go over them anyway. So reboot is one of them. So that'll basically run after the system reboots. Then we've also got yearly 
annually. Yearly and annually are the same thing. We've got monthly, weekly, daily, midnight. Daily and midnight are also the same thing and also hourly. Now all of these except for reboot actually can be done normally. So if you want to do something like yearly, that would be 0011 star. Now I should probably mention how this format actually works. So let's just go through it a little bit. So the first one we have is the minute. This is the zeroth minute. This is hour. So this is the zeroth hour. Then we've got the day of the month. And then we've got the month and then we've got the day of the week. So if we go over that again, we have minute, hour, day of month, month, and day of week. I'm not sure why these third ones are in this order, but that's just how it works. Okay, so for any of these, you can do star, which means do on anything in that category. You can do a number, you can do a list, a range, or a step value. So I haven't gone over those other ones, but basically a list is exactly how it works. So if we wanna run on Let's go minute one, minute two, and minute three. That's basically how you do that. So you do a comma separated list. Or you could also do a range. So if you wanted to do from minute one to minute 20. So that's how you do that. Or you could do a step value. Now I'm using a step value for these two up here. So a step value means basically every one of those steps. So let's say we wanted to do something, I don't know, every 20 minutes. So we could do star slash 20. Now in some implementations of cron, you can also put a number here as well. So this will basically say run every 20th minute starting from the fourth minute. Once again, you can't rely on this. There isn't a way to replicate it either. So if you need that behavior, you're gonna have to use a version of cron that actually does support that. So the month and the day of week also have special values you can use from them as well. So for the month, you can use any three letter month names and for the days, you can use any three letter day names. So for the month, let's go say Jan or we could go uh, APR, so that's April or we could go DEC, which is December obviously. So any of the months and any of the days you can do that. So if you need a list or a range or a step, not all implementations will actually support doing something like Jan and APR. So January and April. Not every implementation will support that. It will be supported with numbers though, but you can't use the name constants for everything. So if you need to do a list, a range, or a step, you will have to use the numbers. But that's the only difference between using the two of them. Let's go through a bit of an example. So if we go, let's say we want it on the fifth minute of every second hour of any day of the month, on any month, only on the first day of the week. So that's how you do that, and then you can give it a command to run after that. So it can be anything. It can be echo, hello world, or it can be something more substantial, like running a polybar command, or it can be running one of your scripts, or anything like that. So if we just go and save this now, as we can see, it'll say it's installing the cron tab, and basically that means that it's now gonna run every time that that comes up basically. So if we wanna go and delete that, all we have to do, come into the file, delete that line and resave it. Now I don't typically come up with the timing for my cron jobs directly within that file because there is a far, far easier way to do it. So coming over to my web browser for a second, as we can see, I've got this website open here and this is called Cron Tab Guru. I'll leave a link to it down below. This is a really, really useful website. Basically it's a website for testing out your cron job timing. So I've just copied in the cron job that we're doing just before. And as we can see, it's working as we would expect. So at minute five past every second hour on the first day of the week, and the first day of the week is defined as Monday. So you can just define random jobs in here and you might come across some weird timing that maybe is useful. Generally the random button in here, not very useful, but if you wanna test stuff out, then this is a really good way to do it because if you have your cron job timing wrong, you probably won't notice it for a very long time, especially if it's a job that runs every couple of days or even just every couple of hours. You probably won't notice it at least for a little while. And that's because of just how rarely it runs. So test it on this website to make sure that you have your timing correct because if you don't have your timing correct, then your cron jobs are obviously not gonna run or maybe worse, they'll run way too often. So you might have a job that's supposed to run every, I don't know, seven days, and you have it running every seven hours or something. And that could be really, really bad depending on what you're actually doing. So make sure you get the timing on your cron jobs correct. Doing it directly in the file can obviously be done, but it's much easier just to use a tool like this so you can actually see exactly what the timing for your job is going to be. 
So before I end the video, I want to thank a few people. I want to thank my patrons, Andre Road, Elky, Larry, and Zilf, because they help make this channel possible. So if you want to support the channel, or if you just want to have your name read out at the end of a video, there'll be a link to my Patreon down below. So I've also got my Amazon affiliate links, so check out those as well. I've got my social links, so it'll be my Discord, my Telegram, and all of that sort of stuff, and my alternate video platforms for my BitTube and my library. Also remember to smash the like button and leave me a comment down below, and remember to subscribe and ding the little bell icon as well. So I think that's pretty much everything for me, and I'm out.